Hey geeks, before we get started, make sure to do your boy a favor, like, subscribe, leave some comments on the video, let me know what you want to see in the future, and make sure to check out our giveaways playlist because we got some great giveaways coming up. Off the top rope. What's up, geeks? We're here with Pentagon Jr., another AEW Series 2 figure. I'm excited to get this one out because that black and white outfit is the most. I always I loved it on TV. It looks great in action figure form. I should have done this guy first, but I was a little bit excited over Dustin Rose. You see it's in the typical AEW Unrivaled box. You got that fabulous gold trim in the black background, and you got the poster from the ring action on the back and you got series two collection going across the bottom so you can see what else you can spend your hard earned money on. Here's the barcode if you need it. All right, so there he is in his cage. You see he doesn't come with any accessories except for that one open hand. This might be the best booty shot in Geek Hangover history. Ooh, pretty fly for a black and white guy. All right, so the outfit looks great. I see a lot of paint blemishes. Um, the white paint that they use seems like it chips off pretty easily, uh, unless they wanted that wear and tear look, but I don't think they did. But beyond that, it looks fantastic. Uh, man, Jazzwares is killing it with this series. It makes me more excited for series three. I'm wondering what they could do with the DC license. Sorry, I know it's blasphemy, don't jump on me. Sorry, Todd McFarlane, but the articulation they have on these figures is pretty good. I mean, nothing to complain about. What would they do with all this detail on the DC figures? Man, in a perfect world. So let's just take a second to look at that work on the hood. I love, love these AEW figures, man. They do not cut corners on details. It is incredible. When you look at his tattoos all over his arms, they are accurate. They are not just kind of blurbed on there. They try to make them look exactly like they do in real life. You see on this bicep here where he has full sentences. Now my eyesight's too bad to see if those are actual words, but man, I'll be darned if they don't look like him from here. All right, forgive me if you can hear that bird chirping. There's a bird right outside my door and I can't get it to fly away and it is annoying. Hopefully you guys can't hear it. But anyway, so look at the side of his leg. You can see here where I was talking about the white paint kind of chipping off. You can see the black coming through here, here, and here. Looks a lot better on the left leg. It's just a little bit missing from there. So you want to check yours as much as you can, the package if you're getting them in store. Oh, look at this, man. This guy's so awesome. Loving the boots. Man, I'd be really curious to find out, and I'm gonna reach out to them and see if somebody there will talk to me about what they're doing to get this kind of detail there. I, I mean, I'm just so impressed by it. Let's pop in that other hand, see what it looks like. Look at those eyes. They were even able to get the look of the contacts down. God, this thing is fantastic. Am I going on too much? I'm sorry. This is really impressive. If you haven't grabbed this guy and you're watching this, you must be interested, grab him. All right, so head, you get 360 swivel, nice and tight. There is no lean on this guy. I wish they would add that in. Looking straight forward. Head tills down a decent bit. And taking a peek up. Great range on the shoulder hinges. 
to get a 360 there. So what's interesting here is he doesn't have a butterfly joint. His arm comes as far forward and into his chest as the other figures in the line, but it goes back a lot farther. Huh, that's really, really strange. I'm gonna go back and look at the other figures and maybe warm them up a little bit and see if maybe they were just stiff, but the other two figures from this line that I reviewed do not go back that far. So that's great, great flexibility there. Does have the double jointed elbow, so you can get in there right in front of his jaw. You can reach up to the back of his head. Bicep swivel. Both hands have a vertical wrist hinge. Doesn't get up very high, so you're not quite getting a repulsor blast. Come, hold my hand. Kiss the ring, peasant. They even got the elbow tattoos, right? Let's look at these tattoos for a second. That is amazing. My favorite part here, that smooth abdominal rocker. Yeah, baby, yeah. Kind of crunch we get. Steep range there. Not much in the way of leaning back. I do have that waist articulation there, which you can rock and add to it. And I don't do the 360 on them because they tend to pop off. But if you add that with the crunch leaning back, he goes back a lot further. I need abs that show through my wrestling gear. One thing I hope they fix in the future, these thigh joints, you don't get a lot of range there leaning forward, which, which was also not getting a lot of range in kicking forward either. And as soon as I say that, I get one with better range than most. So he does seem to kick out a little bit further than some of the other AEW figures. As a matter of fact, this leg's not straight. Let me straighten that up so you can see the range. There you go. See? Kitty can can. I'm going to say sort of. The split never disappoints. Leapfrog. So he does have double jointed knees, but these knee pads do kind of get in the way and wreck havoc, so you don't get the full range. Now, they do like they can be moved. Yeah, you can pull them down. They're tight, hard rubber. I'm not messing with them. Because my luck, they'll break. And it also breaks up the paint job. But I'm good with it. He's not gonna be running any races around here. Good range on the toe, pointing straight down. It's almost flush with the calf. Don't get a lot of range pointing up, so no moonwalk. Foot is on a rocker. Do you get 360 at the calf? Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> And you also get 360 on the foot and get all sorts of angles there. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This dude is pure fire. Dope. Love it. And again, good job with scaling. You see him there with Dustin Rhodes and Mox. And you see that he is shorter than both, the way it should be. And you see there's a huge size difference there. And with the skin tone there, big difference between Series 1 and Series 2. All the figures in Series 1 had that same pale, plasticky Cabbage Patch skin. But what I'm catching here is not only did they fix that in Series 2, if you look closely at Dustin and Phoenix, you can see that Dustin is actually lighter than Phoenix. So they were accurate there too. You can see the difference in skin tone there. You can see that his skin has a much darker tan look to it. So that's awesome that they didn't just slap the same paint on every one of these figures. I love that. Kudos to them. I think every wrestling action figure should come with a tag hand so you can have them reaching for a tag. 
Uh, Cody kind of looks like he's reaching for a tag, but that thumb throws it off. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Are you digging this? Uh, this is my favorite figure so far in the past six months. Uh, his look is just phenomenal. The detail is impeccable. I don't know who could argue with it. Well, I'm sure somebody could. It's the internet. All right, guys. So let me know what you think. Did you manage to get your hands on him? Were you on the fence? Did my review help you out? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to check out our giveaway playlist. We're about to reach 1,500 subscribers, and we're giving away an Age of Ultron Hulkbuster 2 pack. Also, Make sure to subscribe and turn notifications and share this on social media and with other geeks that would enjoy this content. All right, geeks, till next time. Geek out. Yeah!